Welcome to our research seminar. Let me present our today's speaker. It's Sofia Dakuk, Junior Research Fellow of uh, Center for Institutional Studies. Sofia, you're welcome. Um, hello, dear friends and colleagues. I'm very happy to see all of you here. And the topic of our today's presentation is the diffusion of academic achievements, social selection and influence in student network. This paper was um, mm, produced in collaboration with Dilara Valeva and Maria Tkevich. Uh, well, uh, let's speak about uh, the academic achievements of students. It's one of the most interesting and well investigated mm, uh, uh, type of achievements among students. And uh, uh, since uh, Coleman report, uh, the role of social environment on the student academic achievements became very popular research topic in the fields of economics, sociology and education. Uh, peer group effects means that uh, the, influ the, that the peers within our classroom somehow influence our individual achievements, such as academic achievements. Uh, there were a lot of empirical uh, uh, researches um, in the field of uh, peer group effects and uh, they were done on different samples and um, I would like to uh, outline here uh, four most interesting empirical results. Uh, the first is that a lot of researchers argue that there is peer influence. So peers um, influence the student's individual performance. And uh, then uh, they drilled down into the mechanisms of peers' effects among different uh, performance <coughs> groups and found that high achievers produce stronger influence on their social environment. It means that uh, students who have higher academic achievement tend to influence their peers higher rather than low achievers. On the other hand, low achievers are more influenced by their peers. It means that they receive uh, more from their social environment. And some of the studies uh, also show uh, weird results. For example, in the study of um, uh, Gigi Foster with uh, co-authors, there was uh, no peer effect found and um, uh, in that sample uh, researchers uh, found that uh, students did not influence the achievements of their peers. So, uh, the, this study uh, these uh, peer effect studies uh, show us that there are a lot of different dimensions on peer effects and uh, they uh, can be influenced uh, by sample and by the research, uh, this research question. Uh, so, um, usually, um, we in, uh, usually uh, under investigation, the randomly assigned group of peers such as roommates, dorm mates, or uh, classmates, when uh, the, divis the, the division on groups uh, works mm, in, um, in a random way. But actually, uh, do significant peers are random ones? This is an important question, and we should say that probably no, and deliberately selected friends might produce stronger influence on our individual outcomes. It means that actually our friends influence us uh, stronger rather than random people because with these guys we spend a lot of time together, we have common practices and they are more important for us rather than random people from our classrooms. And so it's important to take a look on the mechanisms of choice of friend. The choice of a friend can be the result of uh, two different mechanisms, two branches of mechanisms even. Uh, the first uh, branch of mechanisms is that uh, people tend to be friends with others who share something with them. For example, uh, who has uh, same gender or same academic performance. 
<laughs> okay, maybe opposite, but actually uh, in many studies it was found out that people with similar characteristics tend to be friends. And the other branch of uh, these mechanisms is the network processes. For example, mutuality or reciprocity and transitivity. It means that if I feel that I'm a friend, for example, of Dilara, and I'm uh, investing my energy and my time in these relationships, that over time Dilara will reciprocate me. And she also mm, will um, invest in our relationships. Okay, so let's uh, operationalize this and um, outline that two different processes might contribute to peer choice mechanisms. The first mechanism is social selection mechanism. It means that students select peers with similar characteristics. In our case, it's academic achievements. For example, we have these two guys who, has, who have uh, similar levels of academic achievements because both of them are red, for example, they are high achiever students. And over time, they think that they share a lot. And over time, they began to discuss something and then they become friends. So uh, this uh, is a social selection process because two similar persons tend to be friends over time. And the other option is social influence mechanism. It means that students who are friends affect their friends and their achievements tend to become similar over time. Uh, let's imagine that um, I have very, very bad marks and I am a friend of Delara with very, very high academic achievements. And over time, we spend a lot of time together and we tend to share our practices and we ten have a lot of common interests. And over time, I'm also becoming interested in um, academic stuff and over time my academic achievements increasing, increasing, increasing. And so in the end we have this picture that people with high achievements tend to be friends with each other. And uh, the mm, social selection, social influence and academic achievements were investigated um, to our knowledge only in two papers, yes. And these papers uh, Flash, were written by Flashman and Lomi with colleagues. Uh, Flashman investigated uh, the data about American teenagers and their connections. It's at health data, it's a very famous data set. Uh, she mm, investigated uh, the coevolution of friendship networks and academic achievements of American teenagers and found the presence of social selection based on academic performance. It means that people tend to uh, select their friends with similar levels of performance, but she didn't uh, find the presence of social influence. It means that uh, these teenagers in this sample, uh, they do not tend to influence and to um, uh, somehow uh, uh, receive, uh, th diffuse these uh, academic achievements. In case of Lomi, uh, the sample was quite different. It was MBA students in Italian University. He, uh, they, authors, they investigated friendship and advice ties in dynamics uh, with academic achievements. And they found the presence of both social selection and social influence. Uh, however, he found the presence of social selection only on friendship network, uh, not in advice network. Yes, and in the sum it leads us to uh, a lot of open questions. So we have a lot of interesting results about the role of selection and influence in peer group effects and the role um, of academic achievements in this process. And uh, 
in uh, present literature we do not uh, have the uh, researches about the selection and influence in systems with public grading system. Thus, we decided to investigate it. Uh, we formulated the research questions in the following way. What is the role of performance in peer selection? The next research question is how peers influence performance of each other. We approach analyze. Okay. Uh, based on our research question, we formulated the following hypothesis. Uh, hypothesis for friendship network is the following. There is social selection in friendship network. What does it mean? It means that students choose the friends with similar performance. Uh, the second hypothesis is there is social influence in friendship network. It means that friends, friends tend to assimilate the performance of their peers. The hypothesis for advice networks are the <coughs> same, but in case of advice network, of course. Okay, um, and we tested these hypotheses on our data. Uh, let's uh, have a look. Uh, we investigated first year students in HEC economic department. Uh, students were enrolled in uh, to, um, 2013. Uh, I'm again outline that in case of HEC we have public grading system uh, where and in the end of each semester departments announces a public list of students uh, where the students are rated according to their grade point average. Students uh, at the top receive additional financial aid but the most important that students can gather information about all their peers and they can trace the dynamics of the academic performance of their peers and uh, they all the time they know the whole information. Uh, we gathered information uh, of about um, our students from two sources. The first source is this public grading system, so it's data about grades, administrative data. And the second uh, source is a questionnaire survey. We asked our students three times during the year, uh, in October, February and June. And um, in our sample there are 117 students. It's uh, the 80 or 90% of the whole cohort, so there are a lot of students. Uh, we who study in five study groups and the 17% of our sample female. Uh, let's have a look on the network data. We gathered information about three types of social networks. The first type is friendship network. In case of friendship network, we asked our students to indicate classmates with whom they spent most of their time. We call these guys friends. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, we also call asked students to indicate the classmate who they ask for some help in their studies. And we asked these guys advi uh, um, advisors. We also asked our students to indicate classmates uh, whom they named in previous two questions and to say that you knew, you knew these guys before the university. And we call this network pre-existed network. It means that these guys knew each other before the enrollment to the university. Thus, we have three social networks. Both these three social networks are directed. And the number of nominations was not limited. So you can say that I have no friends at all, I have no advisors at all, and I knew no one before enrollment to the university. Or you can write uh, 20 or 30 people who, who are friends with, with whom are you asking for advice, and outline that with these 10 guys, uh, I, was, um, I knew them before enrollment. Uh, here is a network visualization. Uh, the node here is the student. The connection, the edge between two nodes is a directed friendship. 
The color of the node indicates the study group affiliation. So we see that uh, students are clustered according to their group affiliations and we see that over time the network den density increases. It means that the number of friendship connections increases over time. In case of advice network, the situation is pretty similar. We also see the clustering according to group affiliation. Okay, and here is the descriptive statistics. Uh, here is the number of students, uh, the number of uh, connections among <coughs> them in case of French and device networks. We see that the density is low for all the networks and this is a char character feature for social networks. The reciprocity and transitivity are high and it's also a character feature for the social networks. Jacquard coefficient says us how the network changes from the previous moment and we see that in all uh, these observations social networks changes not very significantly but still they are changing somehow and we even can see how they are changing so in this, um, in this case the number of edges decreasing some, at some point and in this case it's increasing. The data about academic achievements, uh, we calculated uh, very similar to HEC performance index. We calculated uh, the um, performance of a student in particular <coughs> subject, multiplied by the coefficient of the subject. It's, this coefficient shows the difficulty of um, this subject and the higher the coefficient, the harder the subject. Uh, for example, for um, physical culture, for sports, it's very low, it's um, 0.1 and for um, statistics, it's 3 or 4, for, mathematic, uh, for calculus, it's something like 5. So it's increasing with the difficulty of the subject. Yes. Uh, we split it, our performance, uh, we split it then uh, students into four performance groups. Uh, for example, if you have relative performance from 80 to 100%, uh, you mm, we um, enroll him to, mm, we assign him to A cluster and so on. Here is the statistics for the performance groups and we see that over time this distribution actually uh, looks like normal. Okay, uh, let's uh, go <coughs> to the method part of this project. Uh, in order to investigate the coevolution of uh, social networks and academic achievements, we implied stochastic actor-oriented models mm, elaborated by Snyders with colleagues. Uh, these models are actor-driven models that assume that each actor within the social network seeks to improve its position over time. The changes within the network are modeled as an outcome of the Markov process and we model the evolution of the social network as a continuous process with when the small macro changes are the sum of uh, when the big macro changes are the result of several very small micro changes of the social network. Uh, according to this uh, method, we assume that at each time step actor changes either an ongoing tie or behavior. For example, I can uh, stop my relationships with somebody or increase my performance level at each small time moment. Uh, according to this model, uh, we, th we imply that actors do not coordinate each, um, his or her actions with other actors within the social network. Uh, this method is um, implemented in our Siena package and we did all the calculation there. Uh, let's now have a look on the effects that we included in our model. I'm sorry. Uh, we uh, included s basic network effects, uh, triadic effects, other type of networks effects, 
the effects of gender, performance and behavior dynamic effects. Now let's have a closer look on them. Uh, these are basic network effects. It, the, the first one is the density. It shows the tendency of actor to create ties. For example, at the beginning we have two students who do not have a connection among each other. And during the second uh, wave of observation we have uh, this connection. And this effect controls this tendency to create ties. Reciprocity shows us the tendency of factors to reciprocate relationships. For example, at during the first time moment we see that A uh, is a friend of B and during the second way we see that yes, A is a friend of B and B is also the friend of A. It's very basic and very important feature of social networks. <coughs> People tend to reciprocate their relationships. Uh, let's have a look on triadic effects. In case of transitivity, uh, uh, people tend to befriend friends of their friends. It uh, sounds very long, but actually it's very simple. For example, if uh, this student is, has a friend and his friend has another friend, over time these two people tend to create a connection with each other. Uh, another very simple uh, and very similar triadic effect is recycle effect. It is, this is a tendency to create cycles. For example, if I'm a friend, if this guy is a friend with somebody and this guy is a friend with another guy, that over time uh, this person is trying to uh, close this triad and arrange ties with the first person. Uh, between the centrality is uh, the last triadic effect that we uh, investigated in uh, this research and it shows the tendency of actor to seek for brokerage positions. Uh, for example, in uh, this case um, <coughs> it shows that uh, these uh, two people they are not for forming a tie and so this person in, in this case, uh, he coordinates the, this information flow between these actors. Is it clear? Okay. Could you please maybe just repeat the, the difference between uh, the, the transitivity and the three cycles? Okay. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, for example. Yes, uh, this guy, he's a friend of this guy, so you see that uh, um, he nominates this person and he, in this case he nominates this person. And then he is again active and nominates another person. So this person, uh, now he receives two ties, but he does not nominate anyone. In this um, case, uh, each person nominates another person, and we have close tri triad. Uh, let's uh, go to ties in exogenous networks and exogen the roles of exogenous attributes. Uh, when um, we have a tie in exogenous network, sometimes it's important um, it's important during the network, uh, during the process of network establishment. For example, if I knew someone before the enrollment to the university, uh, it can be an important reason to become in France after the enrollment. And also being, um, in, being linked in case of advice network also can be very important. So uh, in case of exogenous networks, we controlled for mm, being connected in the same study group and being connected in the uh, s uh, in advice network. Uh, the role of attributes is uh, the role of academic performance and gender. We uh, controlled for three different mm, mechanisms, mm, three different effects. For social selection, it shows the tendency of actors to create ties with similar others. 
uh, we all a lot of uh, we spoke a lot about it today that people with similar characteristics tend to be friends with each other we also controlled for the tendency of actors with high performance uh, to be more popular for example if uh, I, I have high performance I tend to receive a lot of ties uh, a lot of nomina um, uh, nominations for friendship so a lot of people are looking for an option to communicate with me in some way and we also controlled for uh, very similar uh, tendency of actors but not to be popular but to be active it means that if I have high performance I tend to nominate a lot of people uh, in case of uh, behavior mm, we controlled for the following uh, effects uh, these effects uh, help us to reveal the influence of uh, social connections of on our um, on our academic performance on students academic performance we control the linear quadratic shape it's uh, something like intercept we controlled uh, for performance assimilation and this is social influence so we found whether actors tend to assimilate the individual performance of their friends we controlled for the tendency of actors uh, who receive a lot of friendship nominations to show higher performance and also to the tendency of actors who send a lot of friendship requests to show higher performance. It's very similar uh, uh, like popularity and activity. Okay, and let's go to the results for friendship network. Uh, I think that uh, it, it isn't very good and visible table here, so we can return back to it if it's something looks interesting for you. But I think that we should uh, speak to the summary of of the model and for the friendship network. Now we fixed the present of mutuality, local hierarchy, and clustering in social network of friendship. We found that advice and pre-existed network are correlated with friendship. And uh, <coughs> what we found in case of exogenous attributes? We found that students of the same gender and in the same study group tend to form ties with each other. Uh, we found also that men tend to be more active in process of social network formation. And what about our hypothesis? We found that friends assimilate performance of each other. And we found that students with higher performance tend to be more popular and active. So we didn't find the presence of social selection in case of friendship network. And uh, back to our hypothesis, there is no selection in friendship social network of students. Students do not tend to choose friends with similar level of academic performance. But we see that there is social influence in friendship network and friends assimilate the performance of each other. Now let's go to the results for advice network. It's mm, very similar. Uh, and let's go to the summary for advice network. We found the presence of mutuality and local clustering. And we also see that friendship and pre existed network are somehow connected with advice network and all these connections are somehow uh, correlated with each other. We found that students with the same gender in the same study group tend to form ties with each other and it's also rather obvious. We found that men are more popular in advice networks and uh, also s saw that students with higher performance are more popular and actually it's um, also mm, can be explained that if uh, you have high performance people should think that we should ask him he knows a lot he has high grades and we should ask him for help uh, students with similar performance tend to form ties with each other <coughs> and this is a case of social selection 
At the same moment, students that receive a lot of advice ties over time tend to increase their performance. So if a lot of people are nominating you in advice case, you are increasing your academic achievements over time. Uh, back to the hypothesis, we found social selection in advice networks. Students choose advisors uh, with similar levels of academic performance. But at the same moment, social influence wasn't found in advice networks. So we cannot say that students are similar to performance of their advisors. And this is somehow surprising for us. Uh, let's conclude the results of this modeling. In contrast with papers by Lomi and Fleshman, we didn't trace the social selection process in friendship social network. It means that um, people do not preselect their friends based on grades. However, they have all these <coughs> grades in open access. However, um, we found the clear evidence of social influence in friendship networks and we can argue that students assimilate performance of their friends. And uh, in case of uh, advice network, we found that students ch choose advisors with similar levels of academic performance. And uh, students with high grades tend to be more popular and active within the social network. Uh, we, th uh, we suppose that the uh, composition of all these effects shows us the presence of social segregation based on academic performance. In paper by Vaquera and Siberian, uh, uh, authors um, found the presence of rich club phenomena in the classroom. Uh, they traced that high achievers uh, tend to form their uh, dense network core where uh, they discussed <coughs> academic rela um, study related problems uh, when they discussing other issues while low achievers stayed on the network periphery and even they tied to create social connections with their higher achiever peers, mm, these connections wasn't reciprocate. And in our point of view, we see these rich club phenomena in case of open grade system. So people with higher levels of academic achievements tend to form a um, dense network core while guys with low achievements are staying in the core periphery. And um, thank you for your attention. I will be very happy to listen your um, ideas and uh, discuss these results with you. I think that maybe you can find something interesting. Too. works, not both of them, because um, if you select your friends according to the performance, that's, that's not natural to have these statistically significant growth in the performance because they are initially similar. And maybe there is this growth in the performance when uh, some people uh, try to, to get better, but the, these are not so numerous, so you can catch it statistically. Right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it's not a problem. You, you see, that's surprising. That's not surprising for me. That's, it should be like this. It would be surprising if you had two yeses or two noes for this hypothesis. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Marsha, thank you for your question. Actually, um, we, uh, based on the literature uh, about social selection and social influence uh, uh, with academic achievements, we were thinking that actually we should have some social selection in friendship network based on academic achievements. Because in case of Lomi and in case of Fleshman, we saw this social selection process, it actually we assumed that we can catch it. Uh, 
about the social network, um, about the social influence in a uh, friendship network. Um, we had different expectations because in some papers uh, authors traced the presence of social influence, in some no, so it was an open question for us. Uh, about advice networks, um, in my point of view, we, we, expect, uh, we, we expected the presence of social influence because it's rather obvious that we are asking somebody for help in order to increase our own academic performance. So our results are actually at some point really surprising in, in this point of view. But um, according to other papers, for example, the Coera back to the end of the presentation, some papers uh, trace the presence of social selection also in study-related communications. So um, we have another explanation for the results. Any more questions or maybe comments? Yes. Yeah, uh, <coughs> uh, I think there are a couple of ways to explain social influence in your paper. And you have observed social influence. In other words, if you hang around with people who do better than you do, then you can improve as far as your performance improves, right? Uh, one explanation is that they simply give you, uh, help you to write your papers, allow you to copy their papers, plagiarize, whatnot, share with you solution of, solutions of uh, problem sets. That would be the natural way. In that case, your academic improvement, uh, in fact, doesn't exist. You simply have higher marks, but there is no improvement in your performance. And another way is that you socialize with them, interact with them, and as a result, you learn something, you become stronger academically. I think it might be interesting to try to separate between these two mechanisms, because uh, uh, they are they lead to completely different implications and conclusions from a study. And I believe the fact that you are not able to observe uh, social influence in device networks suggests that the first one is probably more prevalent than the other than the second one. In the case of the wise network, you don't ask to copy their work, but you ask for some help. And uh, you don't see such a thing. In the first case you do, and that tells me, that suggests to me that probably a good deal of your observation is driven by seeing the people allowing each other to plagiarize or to take their results. And I recall my own student experience, and that is something that certainly happened in my case. Uh, and the second comment would be, that's not a question of comment, but you might want to have a look at Glazer's paper, Measuring Trust. It's about a completely different topic, but uh, they also use some survey data. And there are some results about uh, how academic performance of grad students at the interview survey depend on their academic performance, uh, uh, affected their capacity to have friends. So there was a strong correlation between academic performance and the uh, number of friends people can. Uh, at the very least, I think it might be appropriate to make a reference. What's and the that, correlations there? Pardon me? What's the correlations there? Uh, positive. If, positive. You, if you do better, then you have more friends. Uh, if you're stronger, I believe, uh, you, you need to double check. It's a paper which is published. It's about 10 years old. You have a look and uh, you might be able to do some reference. And also, as far as you understand, your <coughs> survey was not anonymous, right? So you have people's names, right? Yes, yes, yes. In which case it might be a good idea to try to dig out more of their personal information and to control for this information. Uh, <coughs> what's their background because you might be able to learn something from that. And again, this suggestion is <coughs> uh, driven by the paper that I just mentioned, I'm measuring trust, because it appears that the background of the student, what kind of family he or she is from, and so on and so forth, that matters for networking, and you might be able observe something here as well because you have access to students' files as far as I know. There is a lot you can say about this. Thank you. If Sonia doesn't want her to respond to only I want to mention on your only last comment. The problem with APC student report is that it's very continuous. It means that normally that normally they have both parents in the household. Normally both parents have higher education and they don't have for high income but they have enough money to live on. So there is no much variety of like 
the drug for exogenous shocks and radiations. CT of origin. Hmm? CT of origin. Surprisingly, it doesn't work as we expected. It's, so it's insignificant, right? Yeah, we played both with the CT of origin and the practice to just keep on the door or in the private department or with parents, and it doesn't give any interesting results. Coming back to the issue of uh, like copying papers, etc., uh, I'm not sure that it works for high achievers because uh, unlike low achievers, high achievers compete for like first places in ranking. So if we are both low achievers, we help each other because our goal is to survive in APC. And if you're high achievers, there's no doubt that we survive question is who is the first, you, if you or me, so it means that I can help you, like doing homework, but I, I guess, you know, I guess maybe hmm? in my personal experience it's not something I have. You have a friend which is not quite as strong academically as I am, or if, even if he is, you know, just a matter of friendship, I don't care about uh, having a rival, I would love that person to copy, especially if there is a gap, if I am way stronger academically than my friend, then I will more willingly will help her especially for maybe him as well, uh, because it will uh, uh, improve this situation and will sacrifice much as a public good of some kind. So I would suspect that this effect is present here, although probably there is. Uh, there might be, actually, because you might uh, have a look at different grades that students get, have a look at exams that they write in class, have a look at uh, if you can separate some components of their performance into what they do on their own and into what they collect in class, so what is the percentage of grades that is accumulated based on home assignments and whatnot, that will probably be a good, a good way to get some additional insight. So have a look at different grades. Just a small comment. I'm not really believing it, but following uh, advertising, the last one of advertising on McDonald's, where it just uh, the idea was that uh, the student asked another one for the homework on maths or something like this uh, in exchange of uh, in exchange for dinner. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, but um, I, I've heard, but I never never deal with this with myself that uh, there is uh, some uh, price for homeworks and so on. So it is uh, a chance to to get money for for those who have high abilities and maybe not very high income. And uh, I, I've heard, but I, I never deal with this in high school of economics, that some students really uh, did like this. So, yeah, so it, it is uh, quite common that it, 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 is, it is a market and you can earn something from other students. So it's not just pure social exchange, like friendship, but it, it could be a real market exchange. You give me some uh, work and I'll give you some money. Uh, and re real money. Uh, no, it's just uh, come to my mind this uh, advertisement from McDonald's, but uh, whether you could check uh, whether it is uh, pure relations. So I have a question about your advice network. What was the real question based in I, I don't really understand what is the, the time, what, what, what it really means. So there is the person whom you ask for advice, whom you ask and the person who agree to give you your advice. And whether it is uh, for free or not for free. So it, it is really questionable, this advice network. But friendship, okay, whether you feel me like a friend or not, and that's based on like feelings. But here, advice, it could be really commercial one. Especially if these guys are not your friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah especially. Yeah. Uh, or, for example, when uh, one feel that he is, that you are a friend and another one <laughs> not, for not really <laughs> feel that you are a friend but ask you for advice. But, so mm. I think uh, this advice network is, is really more complicated than you try to present it. Uh, thank you for a question. Um, here is the question that we ask students. Please indicate your classmates with whom you ask for some help in your studies. And um, this is the usual question that is usually used in such investigations. So we 
just followed the methodology which is uh, usually used in studies so who investigate the advised networks and we think that our students indicate the guys who help them in their studies uh, pay no attention whether they pay for it or not. Yeah, but, but I just what I want to say that it could be a real story behind uh, these uh, ties. You probably didn't ask your respondents if friendship is by any chance romantic or not, but you can get a proxy and a whole series now. You can have a dummy for friendship, which is two genders, and see if it makes any difference. In other words, if there is any weaker, stronger impact. Uh, of this uh, peer effect, depending on whether this relation, this friendship has a, has a chance of being more than just friendship or not. Mm -hmm. And this is also something you can uh, find in the paper that I mentioned, because uh, there was some correlation between performance of the student and his or her success as, as you know, close friends. Thank you. Any more questions or comments? So, so you suggest open the opposite gender stance, right? Yeah, both genders. Well, and there is a correlation uh, between having a friend of an opposite gender and being romantically involved in that friend. <coughs> higher than friend with the same gender. Non-zero, but higher. Uh, and, uh, and therefore, uh, you might get something as a result. I would suggest that if it's, if it's non-romantic, then probably the peer effect would be stronger. And maybe this little bit of a noise in your data. And if you eliminate this noise, you get the result of my data chart. But just a guess. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We do have an economic uh, faculty here. Mm -hmm. So it, it will be the year 2040? Yes. It's Nizhny Novgorod. Nizhny Novgorod. It's not Moscow. It's not Moscow. No. We're going to be there, let's say, in March or April, we're going to talk to students, like the folks who are asking I, them. I, I, just uh, a comment that we related to the book, because um, when we ask them to form small groups to, to write together some papers, they face, uh, some of them face real troubles how to get those with whom to walk. And it, it, it is quite a common story that it, that it really is really surprising if they have such nice uh, friendship uh, network or advice network. But, but uh, I don't know, maybe in Nizhny Novgorod something goes really in other way compared to Moscow, I don't know. It should be different first because it's like smaller. Yeah, and maybe they are more homogeneous than most people. They're more homogeneous. Yeah. And for some faculties like her business informatics, or the faculty or like campus in, is in the middle of nowhere. There's nowhere to go, like a coffee or like there's not even a McDonald's mm -hmm. nearby. So <laughs> they just have to spend all the time in the building. That's what we have said. So they can see each other. <laughs> I have no choice. Mm -hmm. So, if you don't have any more questions or comments, I think you should thank Sonia for the presentation. <laughs> and thank you for the discussion.